Hey there, good morning friends, YouTubers, School of Tomorrow. I've also called it Comp Sci High, just for fun. We do kind of a hybrid of computer science and mathematics. It's a niche that needs to be filled, especially at the high school level, so we can use Jupyter Notebooks and Python and stuff like that. So think of me as a high school teacher and think of me as more or less on the literature side of things, American history, world history. I was literally a world history teacher at St. Dominic Academy in the 1980s and a math teacher, geometry through calculus. So that was my character. I played it well. I quit because I thought it was time to move on. I was in my 20s, first job out of Princeton, and I had a call of destiny. But it would have been it would have been easy to stay there. I mean, it was a great job, and I really look back with fond memories. So, getting a little bit into the politics going on right now, I'm feeling with Glenn Greenwald that there has been kind of a sleight of hand where those who were the most misguided and led us to war in so many uh, elective cases, as Tulsi Gabbard calls them, stupid regime change wars and so on. These very people are the pundits of today and are trying to talk us into some kind of war in the Ukraine. Now, speaking of the Ukraine, with Russian language and Ukrainian and me here in Portland, Oregon, <clears throat> what am I making a connection towards? Well, when I joined Academia EDU, I'm just going to click on that, take you to my home page. It's something you, you know, you just pay for it. It's not like they give me a degree or anything. I discuss what my credentials are a little bit. And then under research, you've got my uh, synergetic stuff, a bunch of them, including the slideshow show. And this show, this talk right now, this talk, is kind of a prelude to me going through this slideshow again. This slideshow, I mean this one, right? I do this quite frequently on my channel. I go through these slides. And the plan is to do this again tomorrow <clears throat> to get hold of the video and to give you guys another look at it. So I'm not going to do that all right now. But this is the synergetics designed by Buckminster Fuller, is the point. And when I joined Academia EDU, I found that a lot of the Russian language, it wasn't Russian language, it was in English, but a lot of the English writing that I found about synergetics was about Haken's synergetics, Herman Haken. And that's fine. It's like, that's another synergetics out there. But it doesn't pay to confuse them. And when I look at Haken's page on his synergetics, it's also at pains, I would say, to disambiguate. Even though there's a nod in the direction of Bucky, his stuff is not the Bucky stuff. So you could say my sort of plan is to keep showing how synergetics can feed into transcendentalism, which also connects us to Grunge of Giants. And I've got kind of a, a path here where I'm saying to the Russians, for example, don't mistake uh, our synergetics for Haken's synergetics, right? And Richard has done a really good job connecting me to um, some of my own writings again, he's reflecting back at me what I've been writing and my recent research into JJA. Of course, you've seen all this on this YouTube channel if you've been a loyal fan. I'm not saying you should or could have been, but James Jesus, right, Angleton is who I'm talking about there. And his correspondence with Ezra Pound, basically the Yale English Department has been a source of a lot of spies and so there's that CIA and there's also just Fuller calling it capitalism's invisible army which is kind of clever and again this is all Bucky synergetics which is what I'm going to be chatting about tomorrow and this is kind of how I've got it wired up in my own thinking to something called Martian math 
new math, which is a pun on new math, but of course I'm talking about new is not Unix and Richard Stallman and Linux and the whole open source revolution. And let's see, what else has Richard put in here somewhere? Okay. The primary vector for my synergetics research and curriculum writings is through the Python community in some degree, yes. In fact, I just posted to EduSig. Let's go there and take a look. So tomorrow I'm presenting to um, a small institute. It'll be a small audience, but I'm told that the video, I can make it public. And my attitude when I do these slides is to kind of get into coaching mode as if you'd already decided that you'd like to present these slides. So we have this thing about PowerPoints where each person makes a PowerPoint and then it's their PowerPoint. But think about a, a folk song. You make a folk song with the whole intent is that it be shared. Other people sing it. That's what a song is. And if you think of a PowerPoint as like sheet music, you're basically putting out to the world like a folk song and saying, well, what would your interpretation of this be? So you have to be able to play the guitar, you have to whatever, know how to sing. And so when it comes to synergetics, it's like you would have to have some background to just turn around and present the slideshow. But that's not undoable. And in fact, I am able to coach you in doing that kind of like guitar lessons, right? So a lot of what we do in this channel, I think, is you see me espousing on this various contents. You're like thinking, well, I could do that, and I could probably do that better than he's doing it, right? Because I'm a better artist, whatever. And I think you would be, in many dimensions, able to bring something to this that I have not and cannot or will not or whatever it is because... I'm just one guy, and as I compare myself to, like, the double-A battery bunny, you know, I keep on chugging along, but I'm not, like, a super genius, in fact. I'm a sub-genius, if you know what that is. So, on Synergeo here, I've been giving more sort of static background for my talk tomorrow and for my talks in general. I'll just end with this view of closing the lid, okay? So again, I said it's comp sci high around here, generating graphics like this, being able to do computer graphics at all, Blender and so forth, that's part of comp sci, right? And in high school, we're really interested in number sequences. So, you know, the uh, online encyclopedia of integer sequences, we mine that quite a bit for ways to connect left and right brain, you could say, because you've got these algebraic formulae on the one side and graphics on the other. But to get into the synergetics part of it, which is part of it for our school, is you got to get how you can see multiplying in a different way. If you say 4 times 3 equals 12 and look at this picture, that's different than looking at a right angle, right, and measuring the total area in terms of little squares. Here we're measuring area in terms of little triangles. And the four comes from how many segments we go up each edge here, four and three that is, and 12 is the total area of this green thing called a Utrigon by Wayne Phillips, Wayne Roberts, sorry. I've gotten that name wrong before, by the way. Uh, I have to correct myself from time to time. So tetra volume, same idea, except instead of a triangle and a utrigon, as he calls a triangle with at least one 60 degree angle, here we have what you could call a utrahedron. Now, I don't really push that word as something to use a lot. It's just in connection with Wayne Roberts, it makes sense, because he has his utrigon. So here's a utrahedron, which means at least one corner is 60, 60, 60 degrees. And if you just go along the edges A, B, C a certain length, your choice as to what length, and connect the dots to create a lid, to close the lid, then you've created another tetrahedron. Uh, inside, you could say this green reference tetrahedron, which is in, in contrast to X, Y, Z, this octet truss is sort of our stage or scaffolding for doing spatial work. And whereas just the tetrahedron of one by one by one is volume one, this guy is going to be volume 
20, 5x5, five five, or 2x2x5, two two right? The three spines, the three rays coming off from the corner. You can think of that as the origin. Okay, we've been through this quite a few times on this channel. And uh, the analogy with the flat case is obvious, right? So this is the kind of thing that it takes as background to then be able to go through the synergetic story. And there is a story, and I want to compare, finally, Synergetics with Infinite Jest, which is a book that I've attempted to read, I respect, and now I go back to YouTube and I get these like plot overviews, and people who've really gone to the depths of Infinite Jest, they explain it. They give me more to, to hang my hat on. Likewise, with uh, James Joyce, think of Finnegan's Wake. Once you have a guide, an experienced reader who helps you through, a lot of it comes into better focus. And the synergetics that I'm talking about, the one Fuller wrote and the one the Russians seem to have confused with Haken's, or at least they're not aware of this synergetics, uh, I can understand why, because it's much harder to read even in quote-unquote English. And I say in quotes because is it in English? I think of it as sort of American philosophy, and it's an invented language, so we're already two steps away from English, you could say, because it's American A, and because it's an invented language in a way that's, I'd say, based on English, kind of like in computer programming. You could say Python is based on ABC or ML or one of those other languages, right? So synergetics draws a lot from you know, the language around us, but it's perhaps too innovative to call just English. It's a question. I'm not sure. Okay, so I was going to show you where I've been sharing it through the Python community per this diagram that I use. Python for me is, let's see, did he put anything there? Yes, he did. The VUCA guy. Hey, Greg Hutchins, you're in this diagram now. Excellent. This is really cool, this tool. Richard is, Richard Ramsey's showing us that this tool exists and what you can do with it. And in terms of um, thinking in terms of networks, this is exactly what you want to do. And think in networks and polyhedra. Networks connecting around in all directions on the surface of a planet, you could say, define that planet in terms of networks. So, yes, as you say, diving in, there's a mailing list. And if you go back, it's a public archive, you'll find I'm probably one of the most prolific here, just in terms of having been there longest from the beginning, pretty much, and still being at it. So I just shared this post update from Bridge City, and uh, I talk about, and I'm coming to my end here, about the new course materials that I'm developing called uh, Algorithms and Data Structures, I think it is. Again, comp sci high. This is for a course that uh, hasn't even started yet. I'm still in peer review phase, you could say, running it by the principal and so forth. But it's a pretty hard nosed course in terms of following what a computer scientist would recognize as the content of computer science, in other words, algorithms and data structures. And here I connect back to al Khwarizmi for algorithm, the genesis of the word, the etymology, and I make a joke about Al Gore. Huh. And uh, because, you know, I'm Americanizing it to some degree, what's going on here. Talking about Fibonacci, who took the Khwarizmi algorithms and turned them into uh, more of a European flavored set of algorithms that then helped us get free of um, the abacus and the Roman numbers. Really sparked the beginning of a new civilization, you could say, the Renaissance civilization. And I go back over, over my collection of great books that help and feature a couple of them here. All right, so that's pretty much where we're at. Just the final remarks. I am noticing the trucking um, demonstrations going on in Canada, let's say. And back to this politics here, um, it's frustrating to me that 
people who say they're doing their research and saying they're drilling down and trying to get to the bottom of what's going on, they never finish making that connection between, say, Applewhite and his career and what was he up to and how was he connected to James Jesus and all this. It's very esoteric stuff, of course, but it's also American history, right? It's I'm talking about you know, stuff a lot of people talk about. It's not that unusual. It's not that offbeat. And Bucky belongs in that history. You don't really know your American history if you haven't spent any time looking into Bucky's role. That's another point I keep making around here. And in Comp Sci High, we don't make the mistake of leaving Bucky out of the accounts because... I mean, I couldn't even accredit a school that did that if I were in charge, but I'm not in charge. I'm just showing another another approach. Finally, reaching out to my friends in Italy who went to the Overseas School of Rome. We're reminiscing here about Caracello. Great show on television in Italy where all the commercials were concentrated into its own show at night, 9 o'clock maybe. And as kids, we'd stay up for it because it was one of the best shows on TV and it was all commercials. It's like a circus of great commercials. And then back to regular programming, no commercials. How brilliant. Italians, you're brilliant. All right. Talk to you later, guys. This is like part one, so you're going to see my actual talk to a small audience in a coaching mode. Um, it's going to happen tomorrow morning. My next video should feature some from there. All right. Talk to you soon.